Good Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up those football gods here. Last night, we did not do our live stream because it was Valentine's Day. I got to take care of mama. Yeah, you know, you know, and you know, you guys, oh, hopefully you guys were busy uh, taking care of your significant others and ladies that you were getting taken care of because, of course, that is the day for love. And it was the day after the Super Bowl, so we could take a break. But we'll make up for it tonight, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. I'm going to be on the road today. Uh, i got to go down the country, take care of some business. Got about 300, about 300 miles of driving to do and some work to do in between and getting a building permit uh, application put in for the Red Brick House. So got lots of work to do today. Um, in the meantime, we have, of course, the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys who... Forget about the off-season. There's no such thing as off-season. Right now as we speak, I'm hoping that the Dallas Cowboys, the meeting of the minds, are coming up with a game plan that will finally help us get back to the Super Bowl. We do this every year, every freaking year. I know we do. We got better last year. But sometimes the thing about Jason Garrett, when Jason Garrett was here with his Princeton education, um, sometimes Jason Garrett would always seem like he was the smartest guy in the room. And sometimes he was so smart, he would even outsmart himself. And sometimes we forget about the basic things that matter in football. You can take a look at the Super Bowl here and the playoffs. You can look at our season and the way it went. It all boils down to one thing, and it's not rocket science. I'm no big genius that all of a sudden the light bulb went on and just like, oh, I've got the solution. It's really, really simple. Running game. Flat out on both sides of the ball. That's what it's about. We must be able to run the ball and stop the run. Something we were... Good at last year at times. Other times we were horrendous. But if we just take a look, just just humor me here, okay? Humor me here. I don't know if you guys can read this or not, um, but I, I'll, I'll give you the synopsis of it. Synopsis. Synopsis? Synops okay, whatever it is. I'll give you the meaning of it. The games pretty much that we lost and had problems with, the bottom line was we just couldn't run the football. When we ran the football effectively, we blew doors for the most part. Now, there are some outliers out there um, where we didn't, you know, get a whole lot of yards and things. But for the most part, you can follow the numbers. First game of the season, Tampa Bay. We rushed for 60 yards. We were close. We were a penalty call or two away from winning that game, but we only rushed for 60 yards, 3.3 yards average. Not good. We lost that. Against the Chargers the next week, we ran for 198 yards. Great day, great day. And our passing game was, was efficient. It was efficient, you know. We ended up with 221 yards, 400-plus yards worth of offense. You win that game. You beat the Eagles like a, like a drum. You rush for um, 140 yards, easy win. Carolina, 130 yards, easy win. You, you averaged 7.2 yards a carry. You blew doors on them. You get, went against the Giants. You rushed for 200 yards, 5.2 yards a cavern. You killed them. The Patriots, we went on the road and beat New England. We still rushed for 120 yards, 122. Only 3.9 yard average, but still a good running day. The outlier would be Minnesota. Minnesota, we won that game only rushing for 78 yards. That's more of the exception than the rule. Because when we went the next week against Denver and only rushed for 78 yards, we got our ass kicked. Um, we go to Atlanta, rush for 114 yards, boom, blow them out. Um, we go against Kansas City, 82 yards. The Raiders, 64 yards. We come back, we beat New Orleans, 146. Uh, Washington football team, 122. Giants, 125. Uh, Washington football team, 108. All those games... We win, 
and then we go against the Cardinals and rush for 45. You can look at the pattern here, and so light bulb. The only game that you won rushing over 100 yards was against the Minnesota Vikings. That's it. That's the list. Every other one that you didn't, you lost. It's that simple. It's that simple. On the other side of the fence, the problem has been the Achilles heel for the Dallas Cowboys for a long time. Not just this year. It's been years in the making is being able to stop the run especially late in the season because when the opposition can run the football down your throat, especially when the weather gets cold, they can chew up the clock. They can shut you down. They can keep the ball away from you. They can score and score and score. And so herein lies the problem for the Cowboys. To me, what you have to do, you've got to fix the offensive line. That's the key. That is the key. If we do not fix the offensive line, let me say again, if we do not fix the offensive line, we are not going anywhere. You can blame Dak all you want. You can talk about the wide receivers, Amari Cooper. If the quarterback does not have the time to pass and does not have a threat of running the football, it's not going to work. Those are out there that are debating Tony Romo, Dak Prescott. It's going to be the same result because that was the problem with Tony Romo. The years that we had a credible running game, 2016, 2014, 2007, this offense did great things. Should have been Super Bowl or at least NFC Championship type teams. They have. Crazy shit happened between a bobble snap, a, a catch, no catch, uh, an Aaron Rodgers, you know, pr- hail and a prayer, you know, pass. If we do not get that offensive line together and get a semblance of a running game, it's not going to matter what else we do. And I don't want to be the alarmist, but we've got the first place schedule. We've got the fact that nobody's repeated in the NFC East since 2004. And, of course, you have teams that are going to be gunning against you. And already, of course, you're a Super Bowl favorite for next year. Now, on the flip side of this, you can look at the defense where we're giving up. Look at this. I'm going to flip the camera for you. Start going through. We're giving up to, like, Denver. 190 yards to Denver. Um, Kansas City, 126. Raiders, 143. New Orleans, 153, but we did win that one. Washington, 100. Giants, 124. Uh, Cardinals, 127. Eagles, 149. We can't give up 100-plus yards every week and think that we're going to be a Super Bowl team. And herein lies the same thing. The defense, and and I'm seeing mock drafts, oh, safety here for the Cowboys, cornerback here. Uh, No, no. The Cowboys must focus on the line. The offensive line will help you to be able to run the football and give your quarterback more time. And the defensive line. A defensive line that gets a push in the middle and can stop the run will make your cornerbacks, your safeties, and your linebackers more effective. The Cowboys must invest on both sides of the ball on the line because it's simple, stupid. It's running. You must be able to run, and you must stop the run. It's that simple. There's no other way to quantify it. And that was our biggest problems last year, those two things. Because when you can run, when you can get Zeke going and Tony going, you got to focus on the run some. You've got the great receivers, but you've got the great receivers that can run all these great routes, but you don't have time for the quarterback because the teams are selling out after the quarterback. And that's it in a nutshell. So I have to get on the road, but we must start, start the hype train now. Start the hype train because we know how this goes. 
let's go ahead and listen to it. Even though the Cowboys are over the cap, $21 million at this moment, which will be dropped down to actually five with Dak Prescott's restructure. Um, knowing that we have 21 free agents, some of them that are key, and having to sign them, knowing that we got a first place schedule, knowing that everybody who gets on the top in the NFC East comes back down to earth. Let's go to the Super Bowl odds. Is behind them with 16 to 1 odds. I mean, they haven't been to a Super Bowl since 1995. I feel like, okay, they make it to the playoffs and then they lose a game and then they're out immediately. Uh, for those Cowboys fans watching, what do you think, Todd? 16 to 1 for the Cowboys. I mean, this would be one of the logical choices. You keep waiting for them to make the ascent in the NFC that's more wide open going into the 2022 season than ever before, given the defections of a lot of veteran quarterbacks, especially through the NFC South. Brady talked about Aaron Rodgers' uncertain status in Green Bay. If Dallas can't step up now, then when, you have to ask yourself. You have the pieces on the offensive side of the ball with your franchise quarterback and Dak Prescott. The running back situation remains muddled. I still think Tony Pollard gives them more explosion than Ezekiel Elliott at this point in his career. But we're going to have to see how the receiver position ends up working itself out. Cedric Wilson, a free agent, all sorts of talk about Amari Cooper that could have potentially played his last game as a member of the Cowboys, which will force CeeDee Lamb to step into that number one role, something he's more than capable of doing. But you look at Dallas on the defensive side as well, and I think one of their top concerns needs to be addressing that pass rush. Randy Gregory will be a free agent as well. And we saw this group overachieve for stretches. They have a bona fide star in the middle in Micah Parsons they can build around, and they play in a division where they should be prohibitive favorites for years to come. But until we see Dallas get over that hump, can you really advocate for betting them as one of these favorites in the NFC. I can't do it with Mike McCarthy at the helm. I think they're the class of the NFC East, but that may still be their ceiling at this point. Do you want a sports network that delivers? So, mind you, here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy about that, because last April, I was out in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, to uh, help my daughter move back east. And we had a great road trip. Oh, my God, that was so so cool. Oh, that was so cool. Um, I met Big Wizzy in Vegas. Shout out to Big Wizzy. And I stayed at uh, the Mirage. And while I was at the Mirage, I took $100 and I put it on the Dallas Cowboys to win the Super Bowl. And at that time, in April last year, the odds were 1-22. Now it's one at 16. So the expectations are even bigger now than last year to win the Super Bowl. And herein lies the problem for us as Cowboy fans. They start instilling in us from the get-go, you're a Super Bowl team. We get these expectations that may not be warranted. And quite frankly, right now, I don't mean to be doom and gloom, but until we come up with a game plan, until we realize who is going to be here, how we're going to be able to make these roster cuts and the changes on here, I don't know how you can expect the Cowboys to be a Super Bowl contender when you may be looking at losing Amari Cooper or Tyron Smith and having issues on the offensive line and Demarcus Lawrence and Randy Gregory. That's four big players that you have. And you don't know if Tyron Smith is going to be able to hold up if they say we're going to hold on to him or if we're going to say we're going to draft somebody if that guy's going to pan out. You don't know. There's too many unknowns. This is we know we can get people to bet. We know we can get people to watch. And a lot of times these things are not based on reality as much as it is the money. So with that being said, I got to go up here in the workshop, did a couple things done before I get on the road. And um, I will be seeing you guys on the road. I got some thoughts on Michael Gallup and that situation, along with Amari Cooper um, and reality that needs to set in about Michael Gallup. And so, with that being said, our folks here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.